Ladies and gentlemen, it has come to my attention that some players have no idea how to punish defensive play styles. I'm going to talk to you about the RTS Triangle of Doom. Because every RTS gamer, whether you're playing Age of Empire, Starcrafts, or whatever, should know about this. This is a sacred technique that's been passed down for generations, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how it works. How do we make a triangle? Let's get this crap here. Feel free to backseat my painting skills. This is way too bright. Perfect. Let's get this uh, brush here. Let's get a triangle. Let's make this red. See how this works. Thickness, maximum thickness. All right, this is a triangle. Some of you might be saying, what, is that really? It is, it has three sides to it, that's why it's a triangle. So you've got, oh crap. Let's just write out the different points of this triangle for you. You've got number one, let's do green, because money, green, makes sense. This one is greed. Greed. Also, my favorite character in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. But that's beside the point. What's in another corner here? Let's get aggression. We'll do orange, because we already have red for the triangle. Aggression. Oh my gosh. Fixable problems. And it's fixed. Excellent. And then in this corner we have what? Defense. It's too blue. Turtle Terrans. Sure, blue is fine. Okay, you've got greed, aggression, and defense. And I'm going to do some arrows here, which tell you what beats what. Okay, so let's say someone, I've heard this question a bajillion times in the Twitch chat, streamer, 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 and I'm like, what, dude? Like, the Terran is making heckin' planetaries and missile turrets and sensor towers and siege tanks. I don't know what to do, because I make Roach Hydra, and I attack and I just die. Well, that's because you're trying to be aggressive against defensive play. And if they invest their entire being, every decision that they make, every move they take, every step, every piece of the build is all about being unkillable, and you try to run across the map and kill them, assuming the two of you are approximately equal skill, you're going to crash against their rocks, lose your army, be really far behind, and you'll be sad. So let's just get a nice paintbrush here. Let's do this. Defense beats aggression. And this is not a universal thing where defense is always going to beat aggression because the reasons this could not work out is the defending player messes up the defensive procedure or they're confused by your build and their attack isn't very good or you just outclass them and you're a better player. But most of the time, a defensive approach should counter an aggressive approach. Okay, well, why would you not just play defensive every time? If you play defensive all the time, then you're going to defend all the aggression. Well, that's because if someone doesn't attack you, and their whole purpose and mission in life is to spam workers, upgrades, get to tier 3 tech, and take all the bases on the map, you're what's called fucked. So greed beats defensive play because the greedy player can capitalize on more of the map they can generate more resources and establish more production than a defensive player so the defensive player is doing a bunch of static defense we can just write out some some little things that they're doing static d defensive buildings we'll just say planetaries for an example Siege units. We'll say this up here, greed. We'll say this has workers, expansions, upgrades, tech, production buildings. Okay, so greed is gonna be doing these things. Defensive moves are gonna be stuff like this. 
aggressive moves, this would be timing attacks. Pokes and timings. Fantastic. Well, why would you not just play greedy all the time then? Because you can outgreed the defensive players and you're just super ahead. Well, that's, I'm glad you asked that question. That's because if you're against an aggressive player who knows what they're doing, this is the greater than less than sign. I'm not sure if this is totally obvious to everyone if you didn't stay awake in math class, but the greed, they're gonna have what? A million workers and no lings and no banes and no roaches for an example. And the aggressive player is gonna have a one base ling bane all in. The greedy player is fucking dead. So, aggressive players can oftentimes get really nice pickups and wins just because people were too greedy. So you might say, well, looks like each of these has its own upsides and downsides in this relationship. Yes, that's true. And that's part of why RTS is consistently interesting, is because a player can choose to lean in any given direction for any match that they play in. They could say, all right, this time I'm gonna go for a cheese. Or this time, I'm just gonna go for three bases super fast and just, they can try to stop me. Or I'm gonna just try to not die and just keep my stuff at home and power up. If you can identify which of these the opponent is representing and adjust, that's what I would call playing solid. Where you're not just trying to play one particular way in a stubborn fashion, you're looking at your opponent and you're saying, how are you playing? What are you doing? Because I can take a counter style approach to your style. And I do this all the time. This is basically my approach to the game is my goal is to play solid, which puts me somewhere in the middle and I can adjust my stance based on the opponent that I'm up against. So let's say I queue into someone and I see this, this person's name at the loading screen and I say, dear God, this is the cheesiest motherfucker that ever lived. How do you think I would adjust my play if we say that I'm dead center player, which I'm not, I'm probably probably up here somewhere. I'm more, more greedy. If they're the cheesiest motherfucker that ever lived and they're over here, then I could do something like open pool first. I could just make an adjustment. I could go gas pool hatch instead of hatch first. I could drone scout around my natural for cannon rushes and I can invest a little bit more in defense because I know that this opponent's goal is to play as little StarCraft as possible with an aggressive timing. And since they do these kind of builds, they're not gonna be as comfortable in the late game situation. So if I can survive their bullshit in the early game by moving myself a little bit more into the defensive category, then I'll be greater than, oops, greater than here, this aggression. But Neuro, what about the people who are just, they're just so turtly. They're so turtly, what are you even gonna do? You can't break that. Well, you can't break it maybe, but you can chip away at it and you can eat the map. So what I do if I'm against a, a player and I go to the loading screen and it's like, oh, this Terran guy, he always plays turtle mech. All right, what do I do? I get up to 80 to 90 drones as fast as possible. I get to my five base and I go Roach Ravager Swarm Host. Well, why do you do Roach Ravager Swarm Host? That's because I can trade the Locust cooldown by taking my Swarm Host, throw Locust at them, and then rush in with the Roach Ravager, use my Corrosive Bile cooldowns on the Ravagers, and then fight until the Locusts are gone and then run home. That way, I can take an efficient trade. I know my opponent can't chase me back across the map because I have Ravager Biles to punish them. And I'm basically good to just deal a little bit of damage every time. So if you adjust and you say, okay, this is a hyper defensive player, I'm going to push myself even more in the greedy category, then you can take an approach that actually works. A lot of players get upset by a strategy because their default approach doesn't work against what some given opponent's strategy is. But that's not necessarily them just playing in a bad way where they you just shouldn't turtle as a Terran player. It's just inherently wrong. No, you can turtle as a Terran player, but you need to be able to identify when other people are doing that. And you also need to understand the downsides of doing that because there's a downside for each of these things. You're overly greedy, you die to all the timings. You're overly defensive, you fall behind against everyone who macros fast. 
you're overly aggressive, well, you're just going to get slapped down by people who know how to wall off and stuff. So you should have this whole range of behavior at your disposal. And as you get better and better at the game, you can adjust your approach of, oh crap, I faced this person last time and they were super cheesy. So you know what? I'm just going to make a spine earlier on to be a little bit safe. That stuff is really cool. And it's part of what makes this whole RTS dynamic between human players really interesting. And also part of why barcodes are unfun is because it doesn't really establish this drama and narrative of, okay, this is this kind of player and I'm this kind of player and we've had these kind of matches before. So it has a sort of back and forth of strategy. So yeah, there you go. That's the triangle of RTS stuff. There's probably some official name for this, but this has been known for quite some time. I was told about this when I first got into StarCraft II. And I did approach poker this way as well, where you can think about a hyper-aggressive poker player who's trying to bully people off stuff and raise people to try to scare them out of hands. And the way that you counter them is by playing defensively, where whenever you have a good hand, you raise back at them and you try to piss them off and you get all in whenever you have good value and then you take their stack because aggressive play does have some downsides for someone who is sitting at the table and maybe they're just defensive all the time. What I would do there is I would be a little bit greedy where I would just bet over their big blind and small blind to just try to get little pickups from them. So yeah, this is a pretty strategic thing you should be aware of. And don't be upset if your strat doesn't work. You should think about, for any given match, was my opponent more greedy, more defensive, or more aggressive? Because oftentimes one player will just naturally be on the front foot more often. They just like to attack more, they end up attacking more, and you need to think about the advantages and disadvantages of that. Maybe you like to be a back foot player. That's fine. Maybe you like to be a front foot player. That's fine, but there are many stubborn players out there and the approach that is best fit for a given match is the one that reacts to your opponent a little bit and makes some adjustments. Take that chat and YouTube, the triangle of doom.